So in this video, we're going to look at cold start issues on diesel engines. So a lot of people have got diesel motors in their car and they report all manner of problems getting them started on cold mornings or when the engine hasn't really been fired up. So we're just going to look at some of the most common areas that cause these cold start problems. And then we're going to flag up the common diagnostic procedures that you should go through in order to solve these problems in your diesel engine. So please bear in mind that this is a very general diesel guide. There are some engines out there with very specific issues and specific things that you need to watch out for. But as a general rule of thumb, what we cover in this video will, will pretty much cover all of those issues. <laughs> So cold start problems, this is where the engine will not start or has great difficulty starting on cold mornings or when the engine has not been run for a substantial period of time. So when you first turn on the ignition, you'll notice a little glow plug light coming on on the dashboard. So the glow plug is effectively a little rod inside the engine that gets very, very hot and starts to glow. And in cold temperatures, you may struggle to get enough heat to start that ignition process in the engine itself. So the glow plug actually raises the cylinder temperatures. So the intake air and fuel are at a high enough temperature to combust when the compression is at the correct point. So most garages will actually replace the glow plugs as soon as they hear about cold start issues because it is quite a common thing. But actually you should check your glow plugs. You can test if they're working or not. If you just put a volt meter between them and the power supply and just check they are getting enough voltage. So if your engine always struggles on very cold mornings but on warmer days it's not struggling to start and you have no trouble at all starting the engine when it's warm, it could well be the glow plugs. So get them tested and checked and if there's a sign that they're not getting enough voltage or they're not doing their job properly, replace them. It's a relatively cheap fix for most cars, although they can be a real pig. So the battery is a critical component in your car engine. It needs to deliver enough power for that starter motor to to crank the engine itself and turn it over. It also fires up all the other systems within the engine. So if there is a problem with the voltage, it's going to affect so many different areas of the car. And on a cold day, the battery voltage will generally drop. So you might have a battery that's working perfectly well in the warm weather, but as soon as that temperature starts to drop, the battery efficiency will degrade and that working battery that was only just working is now going to fail on you in the winter. And that's probably why there's so many breakdowns and call outs to breakdown associations in winter due to battery problems. It's not because the batteries have all failed at the same time due to their age, it's because the temperature is sufficiently low to expose the weakness in the battery itself. So we'll mention this later, but um, most diesel engines require a certain RPM speed to be met before it will start the firing up process with the fuel and air delivery in the engine itself. So if it's not getting enough cranking power and it's not able to get the optimum RPM to start, it will just not start. And that will typically manifest itself in long start problems. And if your battery is starting to get down, you may well run out of juice before you can get the engine properly started. That's why it's a good idea to dip the clutch on most diesel engines when you actually start them. It just reduces the load from the transmission in the engine itself. So the starter motor is only turning the engine. So a simple checklist really that we should put up just to diagnose cold start problems. The first one is to check that the battery is properly connected and it's in a good state. So bad earth connections can cause all sorts of intermittent faults with the car. It's not generally limited to starting issues. So if you're getting other problems in the electrical system of the car, it could well be the battery or the connections to and from the battery or a short somewhere in the system. So in some cold climates, people actually use battery warmers. It's interesting that at zero degrees Fahrenheit, a battery can lose up to 60% of its power. At 32 degrees Fahrenheit, it can lose about 35% of its power. So just warming that battery up will certainly help to improve its efficiency and may just lift you over that threshold of not being able to start your diesel engine. So that's for people that live in really, really cold climates. And we've had some really extreme cold weather lately, so that may apply to you this year, whereas in previous years, you've not been worried about it. So check the glow plugs are functioning properly. Check the voltage. They should be getting 12 volts when they kick in. If they're not getting the full 12 volts 
or there's some sort of problem with the circuit there, you need to address that and just make sure that's fixed because those glow plugs are really vital on cold days. I always recommend to people to actually wait for the glow plug light to go out when they start their engine, just to get into a habit. On most modern diesels and in most environments, you can get away with just starting the engine, but it's just good practice to get into just to check your dashboard lights as you turn the ignition key and just make sure everything settles before you actually turn the starter. So we've spoken about the cranking ability of the engine. So if you've got the wrong grade of oil, it will not reduce the friction to the point where the engine can effectively start itself. So you may need to switch grades of oil. Turn off all non-essential car functions. So most engines have got a function that isolates the circuits it needs to start the engine. But if that isolator is not quite working properly or there's some other issue in the system, it certainly would be good practice just to turn off all of the systems in the car and just see if it starts okay now. And if it does, you've again helped to isolate the problem to that isolation circuit that helps to prevent the voltage draining when you actually start the car and need all the power in the starter. So fuel additives can also be useful. So if you're starting to get gel forming in the fuel, the fuel is not flowing at the correct rate, you could have all sorts of problems with it not burning, not even getting into the engine in some cases. So an additive, an anti-gelling agent is the most common additive that people would use in winter in their fuel. But to be honest, most manufacturers do this at the pump. And unless you're living in very extreme climates, it's probably not something you need to worry about. If it's something that you've experienced, drop us a note in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. We don't get extremely cold weather here in the UK, particularly down here in the south. They call us softies for a reason. We really don't like the cold weather. So your car is designed to operate within a certain temperature range. That's the way the engine was set up, the map from the factory, the components used, the type of injectors, and everything has been set up for an operating range. So if you suddenly drop outside of that ideal operating range and you've got extremely warm conditions or extremely cold conditions, it could just require a bit of an adjustment in the ECU of the car just to prevent the problems that you're getting with starting. But again, that's something that only affects you if you've had sudden drastic changes in the weather conditions. So I hope this video has been useful to you. If you've had cold start issues, drop us in the comments what your experiences were, what you did to fix it. Did you enjoy this video? Would it have been useful in you diagnosing the problem? Have I missed anything out? If I have, let me know and I'll address that in a future video. Thanks so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please do so because we would love you to stay tuned and I'll see you in the next video.